Welcome to part 6 of Password Cracking 101 plus 1. In part 5 we finished off with a mask attack where we looked at attacking a cached domain credential um, and we had some uh, criteria that we could use to help reduce the key space of our passwords. We are now going to move on to hybrid attacks uh, which will build up to our next exercise. So hybrid attacks are similar to um, a combinator attack, which we're going to look at in a later video. What this allows us to do is it allows us to mix a mask, which we've now learned to apply in earlier exercises, with a word list. And we can do this in two ways. We can either tell Hashcat to guess a word list first and then append a mask at the end, or to apply a mask first and then append word list candidates at the end. Now this is one of the few times in Hashcat where you do have positional requirements. Okay, so in Hashcat, the attack modes 6 and 7 are wordless and mask, or mask and wordless respectively. So in attack mode 6, Hashcat does require the word list before the mask you apply. Whether that be custom word list, custom masks or not, it doesn't matter. The word list needs to come first. Similarly, in attack mode 7, you would need to apply your mask first and then uh, the, the path to your word list. These would be required, otherwise Hashcat will of course complain to you that you've got things the wrong way around. But this will allow you this will allow Hashcat to guess your word list candidates, and then you can be very, very creative with how you apply your masks to increase your chances of success. Okay, so in the next exercise we are going to look at attacking um, an NTLM challenge response hash. So in order to do that, let's just quickly explore what this is. Okay. There's lots of course. There's lots of good reading you can of course do on this. We're going to give a high level overview of an NTLM authentication, and hopefully this should help understand what we're going to be attacking shortly. If we have three systems in play, we have our client, we have a file server. Let's say this is a file server on a domain where you're accessing resources, a file share, quite common, and a domain controller. When you try to gain access as a client to that file server, the first thing that happens is your username is sent to the server, and your hash is calculated locally. A random length challenge is then sent back to the client from the file server. Now, if, if you're using, if, if you support an older, more legacy NTLM v1, which hopefully you're not, this would be a fixed 16 byte length. Otherwise, it's a variable length because of all of the information that's included in this. A random length challenge is sent back to the client, and the file server says, OK, client, it, it, it's to, to the user, if you are who you say you are, please encrypt this with your NTLM hash and send it back to me. So the client says, OK, it takes that challenge encrypts that with the user's NTLM hash and sends it back to the file server. Now at this point the file server has three very important pieces of information. It has the user's username, the client's username, who's using it uh, from step one. It knows the original unmodified challenge it sent in step two and it now has that challenge lovingly wrapped and encrypted in the user's NTLM hash in step three. So what it does is it throws it all across to the domain controller and says okay domain controller can you please verify that this user is who they say they are. Now the domain controller is running Active Directory, and Active Directory uh, stores all of the usernames uh, and NT hashes anyway, so there's no problems there. The domain controller effectively recreates step three. It takes the file server's original unmodified challenge, re-encrypts it with the user's NTLM hash, and if the resulting values match, then the user is who they say they are, and it instructs the file server to uh, you know, permit access. Otherwise, it says access is denied. Now that of course happens very quickly behind the scenes, but there is a shortcoming with this uh, with this authentication process, and it's something that sort of Kerberos addressed. It is the fact that this allows us to play man in the middle, um, and NTLM uh, v1 and v2 hashes for anyone who's done it in testing can be obtained scarily, quite trivially on networks using tools like Responder or Invey, if you're running it from a PowerShell prompt, uh, to say to uh, clients, victim clients on the network, hi, I'm a, I'm a resource you want to talk to, and then the client will then send their authentication material to you, the attacker playing man in the middle. There is more to it than that, so I'm speaking at a very high level, but this is one of the problems with NTLM challenge response. So, let's build into a hybrid attack. Going into our exercises folder, exercise 6, there will be an NTLM v2 hash that we're going to want to crack. And in this case, the password starts with two characters that are either numeric or special. That's all we know. So by inference, we're going to be wanting to combine this mask with a word list. Hence, we're looking at a hybrid attack. Okay, let's grab Kali and put it into the background. Okay. First of all, let's look for our 
if I could spell hashcat, our Entel um, MV2. In this case, this is the one we're interested in. There are sometimes more variants that are falling out of scope for now, but this NetEntel MV2 is mode 5600, uh, and this is the one we're after. Okay, so let me grab the attack string for this. Here we go. NTL MV2 hash. Oh, I probably should have uh, shown you the hash as well. But you will have no doubt found it by now. Here we have a hash. This is a user S Hunt who belongs to the Insect Corp domain. And uh, a very, very long hash, as you can see here. Very, very different to MD5 or NTLM or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to call Hashcat mode 5600, as we identified previously. We're going to give it the file, because this time I'm not going to quote it and pass it to the command line. We need attack mode 7. Now, attack mode 7, if we jump back to our slides here, here is mask plus word list, okay? And as we know that we want to start with two characters, we know that we're applying our mask first, and then the word list after that. So... Let's uh, um, pass off um, a file here that we want to attack, attack mode 7, and then we need to create a custom mask, okay? So, either decimal or special. These are the two characters we want to test for, either numeric or special. As such, we can call that here, define it as character set number 1, then apply our mask, question mark 1, twice, because we know there are two characters that are either numeric or special, follow it up with our word list. And this time, we're going to be using the Google word list that we've supplied on Kali again, which has uh, more candidates in it than the top 100 that we've used so far. Okay, so Hashcat starts up. Oh, and that's cracked very quickly again. Okay, so we can see here, we've got our mask, and we can see that it's applied to the left side. So Hashcat's told us we've got a mask of two question mark ones applied to the left side, and, quest and, and the uh, character set one here comprises of decimal and special. Attacking at a little over a million guesses a second, not really that quick, but again, we're on virtualized hardware. We can see it's cracked. And the password after the final colon, in this case, is at six monsters. So there we have it. Took all of three seconds to do, in this case. Okay. So there we go. Used Hashcat to identify the mode we wanted. Until MV2 was mode 5600. And then using attack mode 7 applied our custom character set that we wanted to, and then used that in a hybrid mode with a word list. Um, and we had also increment, which I didn't mention at the time, but increment would have, would have tested um, both just one character here and then the second character. So if, for example, there was only actually one character before, not two, increment would ensure we would catch that. In this instance, we knew it started with two characters. Uh, and increment, being a very small mask, is just applied there for best practices. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. Hope to see you in the next video.